You haven't found your way here by accident. It's a unique and meaningful connection meant to deliver the impactful message of Apostle Joshua Selman. I stand by the anointing, by the God who sent me. Anyone here who has been tied down, pegged down, that you and your family cannot go forward. I prophesy to you, go forward now. 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 I stretch my hands. By the mantle of the apostolic and the prophetic, I decree and declare for every destiny that has been grounded, I introduce to your life right now the grace for speed. Release. Receive it right now. Speed. 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 Receive that grace. Speed. Shabakatabakatos. Speed. I command it. I declare it. I decree it over your life. Man of God, speed, businessman, speed, Elijah, receive speed in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone who is holding something that should be given to you by God, I declare may God put it in their heart to release it to you. May my God put it in their heart to release it to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. The Bible says, and thine ear shall hear a voice saying, this is the way, walk in it when you turn to the left or to the right. Every confusion in your life, you have been praying for direction. This week, find supernatural direction. Find supernatural direction. Find supernatural direction. In the name of Jesus Christ. If negative cycles, hear me. In the name of Jesus, I call upon the God of my covenant that if there be anything that is a pattern around your life, let that pattern be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. As you shout amen, let it be broken now. This pattern, I've seen it all. I've seen intelligent people. Your grandfather begged with PhD. The son begged with PhD. There are children, they can school anywhere. But the only way they live is by begging. And they are not lazy. And then if somebody emerges and is the one to wipe the tears of the family, even an ordinary bike will kill that person. Any programming against your family, in the name of Jesus Christ, I call upon the God of heaven, let, let the God of vengeance visit your foundation now. Let the God of vengeance, help this woman, let the God of vengeance visit your foundation now. Let the God of vengeance visit your foundation now. There are people who never eat from their children. Please listen. I'm speaking to you prophetically now. They give birth to children, but even at 45, 30, 35, 55, even at all those ages, listen to me, the children will have to eat from the parents. Have you seen people like that? Yes. Parents are retired, but from their gratuity. That's what they will carry to feed the man who has his wife and has the children. When I'm praying for patterns, if it does not concern you, no problem. You can keep your hands when I'm praying about what concerns you. But please, don't lose out this opportunity. For some of you, God has been showing you mercy. Again, I'm praying. Everything that is not written in this scripture that is happening in your life and stopping your life from being an expression of God's grace in the name of Jesus we bury it this night we bury it this night we bury it this night the reason why you will come out of every challenge tonight is because Jesus came out of the grave let me tell you this if he came out of the grave it became the basis of coming out of anything that looks like the grave are we together now yes because he came out of the grave you can come out of anything any problem any challenge I don't care what it is number three number two the resurrection gave credibility to all other words that Jesus spoke I'm doing a recap we're doing a one minute crash course on the implication of the resurrection. I've taught it somewhere, not in Koinonia, but we have a teaching where I will reiterate this. And when you hear me teach that on that day, 
don't assume you wrote it now i've not explained it at all you are just believing i will take time to teach you hallelujah koinonia is not the place where we do conferences this is where you are mentored methodically so i'm not afraid of taking it one by one to teach you until you have that understanding but just for your knowledge jesus said in many instances in scripture that he was going to die and come back to life the resurrection gave credibility to every other word if jesus did not resurrect then it means we have a right to doubt every other thing he said the reason why we can believe any other thing he said was that the most implicating statement he made he defended it did you hear what i said the most implicating statement any man can make is to dare boast that you will die and bring yourself back to life he said it and he kept it that means any other thing of lesser value he said it is worth believing the resurrection gave credibility to every other word hallelujah three the resurrection has now become the central theme of the gospel of salvation this is the third implication of the resurrection every time we talk about the gospel of salvation the central theme is not his earth work the central theme is not his death not his burial the central theme of the gospel of salvation is the resurrection of our lord jesus christ number five the resurrection powerful now the fifth implication the re number what Ah, okay. The resurrection established the victory of Christ over sin, Satan, death, and the grave. I like this one. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, it was a final stamp establishing his victory over sin, his victory over Satan, his victory over death, and his victory over the grave. Hallelujah. Are we together? So his victory over sin, Satan, death, and the grave. Number five. The resurrection. Today allows anyone who believes in Jesus to be a partaker of his life and victory. The resurrection today allows anyone who believes in Jesus to be a partaker of his life and a partaker of his victory this is powerful ordinary me ordinary you for simply believing in jesus and believing the gospel we are made partakers of his life and partakers of his victory this is the reason why we can walk in that victory for ourselves and we can become extensions of that life and victory to as many, even at a miracle service like this. We are partakers of his life and partakers of his victory on account of the resurrection. Can I give you a final thought? Number six. This is powerful. The resurrection today gives every believer in Christ hope beyond death and hope beyond the grave the resurrection today gives every believer in christ hope beyond death and hope beyond the grave i can spend all day teaching this the resurrection today gives every believer in christ hope beyond death and hope beyond the grave that means if you've lost any loved one at all, no matter how long and no matter how sad the event was, if that believer died in Christ, then you are encouraged. The resurrection tells you one day you will see them again. One day you will see your father. One day you will see your mother. Oh yes, you will. You imagine anybody who has died in Christ as a visitor who had a long journey. And for you as a believer, when you contend for long life, it's not out of here. It is to give you the allowance to live serving the purposes of the kingdom. But you have an orientation that to live is Christ. But that if you die, is gain. 
So when you cry over people who die in Christ, it's simply because of the temporary emotional disconnect. But we do not cry as people who are hopeless. No. One day there will be a glorious sound. The sound of an archangel. May it be during a koinonia service. Now while we are shouting here, I will drop this mic for you if you are interested in carrying it. Goodness, my God. Mm. Yes, sir. If you're interested in carrying it, you can carry it and say all you want. You will think I'm joking, but it will happen one day. And if you are in this place and you know you are not going, you better listen and when it's time for an altar call, take your destiny serious because the Bible says it will happen. Anybody can argue about that, but it will happen. I assure you by God, it will happen. Hallelujah. Wonderful service. For some, we all go to bed in the night and suddenly that, that trump by the archangel and the dead in Christ will rise first. And we who are alive and remain, the Bible says, we will be caught up together. We will meet with him in the air. And that will be the end of it. We will wrap our dispensation as we know, fold it like a curtain and allow the other activities that are to happen on the earth while we witness from a plane and a dimension that is beyond this realm. When all is done, then the old heaven and the old earth is folded away. And the Jerusalem, the tabernacle from heaven, God descending to be in the midst of his people. He being the light of that city himself. A Christian is one who believes all this truly. And the Bible says to comfort one another with these words. So while we do the things that we do on earth, we have somewhere at the back of our minds, that someday this life will be folded like a curtain and we walk conscious of that reality. Have you been blessed? Now I can say for everybody who means business with Jesus, happy is sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. You believe that? Amen. My teaching for tonight everything that you have been receiving this is um, an appetizer <laughs> koinonia for you are you ready two scriptures for tonight Colossians chapter 1 from verse 12 to 14 Lend me your attention now. Colossians chapter 1, 12 to 14. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, uh -huh. who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Powerful scripture. Amplify it please. The thief cometh not. Or the thief comes only. In order to steal. And kill. And to destroy. What's his threefold ministry? To steal and kill. Not steal or kill. Or destroy. He will do all three. Building one upon another. To steal, in addition to stealing, kill, in addition to killing, destruction. But Jesus said, I am come, or I came, that they, including everyone here, may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance. The meaning, to the full till it overflows. Shout amen. Yeah. Now, according to scripture, there are two kinds of life. That every man on earth has an opportunity of experiencing. Please listen carefully. 
there are two kinds of life essentially everyone born by a woman every human who finds himself in this side of god's kingdom according to scripture is given an opportunity within the span of his lifetime are we together to experience one or preferably two of these kinds of life number one is called the biological or physical life your biological or physical life let's walk very quickly so the first kind of life that every man born at all has an opportunity to experience what is the biological life the life that an individual can have at the point of conception or delivery you are given an opportunity from the time of conception up until you are delivered and then you grow and live your life you have the biological or physical life the possibility of that life based on spirituality and biology we are taught that it starts at the point of conception you are given an opportunity to experience that life for no matter how short a time every man who passes through the earth are we together now has an opportunity to experience that life the biological physical life number two the second kind of life is called zoe god's supernatural abundant life zoe god's supernatural abundant life god's supernatural abundant life this life is spiritual in context this life is spiritual in context however it is lived out in the physical realm it is spiritual in context are we together it is not biological meaning it does not depend on your being born by a woman no being born by a woman affords you the opportunity to have the biological or physical life are we together but the moment you have that you are qualified that if you walk in keeping with the terms that administer the second dimension of life you can have the way god's spiritual supernatural abundant life it is spiritual in context but it is lived out in the physical realm now listen i wrote something here that i want you to please listen to god's life what we call the way this second but higher dimension of life it came as an improvement and a remedy to the limitations that come with the biological life. The life Zoe, this abundant life, we call it eternal life or everlasting life. You see that now? It came as an improvement and then a remedy to the limitations that came with the physical life. In 1 Corinthians, I believe, uh, 1545 i think 15 give us 44 or 45 i think it's 45 yes and so it is written the first man adam was made a living soul are we together and the last adam not just the second adam the last adam was made a quickening or a life-giving spirit that means even if adam did not fall listen to me the life that we now have in christ is still more superior than the original life or to the original life that adam had are we together the life that we are given in christ is not the same life adam had before the fall adam was a living soul that degenerated to become an embodiment of sin through the fall but that the life that we have in christ today is away makes us beyond living souls we are now life-giving spirits is a superior kind of life are we together so i said that this life zoe came as number one an improvement and then a a remedy it came to remedy the degeneration that happened through the fall reducing man to become an embodiment of sin and then it came as an improvement to the life that man had the way it is called now um let, let, let me use the example of our apps how many of you have seen whether your as you use your phone your gadgets there are times that the phone will tell you there is an update is that true it will tell you that there is an update do you know 
that as far as the company responsible for the applications, they have sent the update and it has reached your phone. And many times they can even list for you the new features in the updates that both improve the quality of your device and remedy for certain flaws in the older version. Am I right on that? Praise the name of the Lord. So, it will tell you that there is an update, but in most cases, it will give you an option whether to update immediately or at a later time. And you can keep postponing forever. The manufacturers, as far as they are concerned, you should already be enjoying the richer, better experience of that application. But because you have not taken advantage of the update, the potential is already flashing on your phone. But whether you walk in the experience of it or not, you can still be suffering the limitations of the older version, whereas the possibility for an update is there. Are we together? God's life came as an improvement and a remedy to the limitations that come with the physical or biological life. Now, please pay attention, everyone. I wrote something else here that I want you to listen to. The presence of sin, the presence of the wickedness of men, and the presence of demonic activities, three factors. You want to benefit from this miracle service? Listen to this point. The presence of sin as a nature producing the outworkings of unrighteousness, the presence of the wickedness of the hearts of men, and the presence of demonic activities makes it impossible to live an excelling life from a purely biological standpoint. That means there are three factors that makes it impossible to maximize life if the only thing you have is the biological life. The presence of sin as a nature in man. In iniquity did my mother conceive me, the psalmist said. Are we together? So in every man programmed in our DNA by reason of the fallen nature is the nature of sin that will now produce the outworkings of unrighteousness in its variety. That it's a nature that is in a, enshrined in all men. The only remedy to that nature is receiving the life of God. Are we together? The presence of sin. Then the presence of the wickedness of men. Then the presence of demonic or satanic activities makes it impossible to live an excelling life and to maximize life from a purely biological standpoint. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, God looked down and he saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Who saw it? God. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. This was God's verdict. When he looked from heaven, he saw that something had happened to man by reason of the falling nature. That the imaginations in the heart of man was only wicked continually. And that because of that very factor, it is impossible for you unassisted to truly walk in the experience of victory if all you have is just the biological life. Men will not even allow you to enjoy your life. That's what I'm trying to say. That men are wicked, so wicked, you don't have to look for anybody's trouble. They fabricate imaginations and make sure they stop you from enjoying the liberty that is in Christ. Are we together? So because you get married, someone gets angry and says, On over my dead body for you to enjoy your marriage. Men for you. You say, ah, I just got a job with an oil company. An oil company before me. All right. You see that now. It is the reality. God's verdict about men is that the imaginations in the hearts of men, the wickedness of man was so great. That's why he sent the flood to purge the earth. The presence of sin. The presence of wickedness in the hearts of men. 
and the presence of demonic activities makes it impossible. First John 5, 19, the Bible says, now we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. The whole world, ladies and gentlemen, not just Abuja, not just Nigeria, not just Africa, not just America, Europe, wherever. Once you are on earth, it says the whole world lieth in wickedness. Hallelujah. In John chapter 5, very interesting discourse. Jesus healed the man at Bethesda, if you recall. And when he healed the man, the man got up and went away. And the scribes and the Pharisees were angry. And they began to challenge Jesus' healing ministry. Saying that don't come and heal a man on a Sabbath day. There are other days in the week. Let that man be healed that day. And when Jesus saw the man, give us from verse 12, I think, 12 to 14 for sake of time but the full text is john chapter 5 from verse 1 to 14 and they asked then they then asked they to him what man is that which said unto thee take up thy bed and walk and he that was healed which not who it was for jesus had conveyed himself away a multitude being in that place verse 14 afterwards this was this this is my emphasis Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, watch this, behold, thou art made whole. He says, sin no more, lest a worse thing comes upon you. So we know what brought the problem in the first place. You see that now. He's telling him that the cause for this thing, whether it is sin caused by you or inherited by bloodline, this has been responsible for this bodily tragedy you are suffering. And he says, as you go, he said, sin no more. Less a worse thing will come upon you. So the nature of sin, the presence of sin, the presence of the wickedness in the heart of men, and the presence of demonic forces. Demonic forces. The Bible is full of expressions that there are demonic forces that spy upon the liberty of the saints day and night. Satan is ever determined, listen, to destroy your destiny and my destiny. And if allowed, he will wreck your life, wreck your ministry, wreck your family, wreck your reputation, wreck, destroy everything. The thief he's called, that when he comes, there is no sparing. He is vicious, merciless in his operation. He will steal, he will kill, and he will destroy. Now, from a purely physical and biological standpoint, it is impossible to live a life, I wrote here, that captures total health, longevity, listen now, impact, favor, advancement. You cannot experience all of this from a purely biological standpoint. No, something will be wanting in your life. You cannot enjoy total health if all you have is just biological life. No matter how you eat well, no matter how you do your gym, profitable as they are, demons don't care whether you are gymming every day or you are eating cabbages and veggies. When they come, they are vicious. They will plant wicked diseases that you cannot trace to any mismanagement in terms of nutrition. Satan for you. Hallelujah. How about longevity? Do you know? The Bible says, with long life shall I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to live long if you don't live well. Because it becomes like a curse. There are many people today, long life is a curse to them. I tell you the truth. They pray for death and pray for death and the spirit of death will never come to them. Do you know why? Because the devil enjoys their being tortured. They are kept in a state where they cannot help themselves, but they become liabilities to any other person, yet they will not die. Do you know the Bible says when the church is raptured, it says that because of the persecution of the Antichrist, this death that people are running away from, that people will come to the mountain and say, fall on us, so that we'll die and escape this, and death itself will run away from them. It is not wise to just live long if you are not going to live victorious. With long life will I satisfy you, but within that long life I will show you my salvation. Hallelujah. 
Now, please don't, don't feel sad, and, 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 and this is not to play with your emotions. I've had the honor of praying for people, and I've had the time, I've, I've seen situations where families themselves, out of love, they pray for their loved ones to just die. Not because they hate them. There are people who live perpetually in pain, and after 10 years, they are still there. They can't move. They can't use the toilet. They can't stand. They can't do anything. People have to resign their jobs to stay with them. And these are family members. I pray for you in Jesus' name. If you must live long, live well. Receive it as a prophetic word. If you must live long, live well. You will not live long and sick. Shout a believing amen. You will not live longer and the only part of your body moving is your eyes. Every other part of you is dead. Yet for 10 years you will still be alive. That is torture like hell. I tell you. You ask medical practitioners. Sometimes even though they have the versatility of experience. They've had to stand before patients to cry and weep like children. Hallelujah. You see people damaged and degenerated as if they are not God's creation. And yet they will not die. I'm saying it to you again. If you must live long, receive the grace to live well. So from a purely biological standpoint, it is impossible to capture within that life unassisted by the presence of eternal life many possibilities like supernatural health longevity with dignity a life of impact from a kingdom standpoint a life of favor a life of advancement there are defects and limitations that come with living purely biologically that is what we call existence not living and there are many people who are just existing and not living celebrating birthdays every year wonderful as it is but with nothing credited to their life that demonstrates dignity if all you have in this place whilst you are listening to me and across the airwaves is just biological life the life that came from your mother giving birth to you i congratulate you for being alive but there is an effective superior life that jesus came to give us are we together? It's called Zoe, his life. It's not the life given to Christians. It's the life given to all men who believe in Jesus. Let me repeat myself again. It's not a life given to Christians. The Bible says, whosoever believeth on him. John 3, 16. Whosoever, an unbeliever who believes in him. A supposed outcast who believed in him. Someone who has had your life destroyed and degenerated by wrong decisions. That at the point you believe in him, there is a law in the spirit that you should not perish. But have everlasting, abundant, superior life in all its ramifications. But I am come that ye may have life and to have that life more abundantly. Now, this is the zenith of my charge this night. Listen carefully. Enjoying and maximizing the Zoe life demands that you walk in keeping with four factors. Enjoying, please write, enjoying and maximizing the Zoe life, this eternal life, this all superior life that has come from Jesus to us as a gift. Enjoying and maximizing the Zoe life demands that you walk in keeping with four factors if you do not understand this part then tonight's miracle service will hardly profit you are you ready number one the first factor that you must walk in keeping with if you are to enjoy and maximize this eternal life is that you must number one have an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God. Jesus, the son of the living God. The first factor that you must walk in keeping with 
if you want to receive enjoy and even maximize this new life called eternal life a non-negotiable condition and in order of priority you must encounter jesus the son of the living god very quickly first john 5 11 and 12 first john 5 11 and 12 this is the record or the testimony that God had given to us eternal life, the Bible says, and this life is in his son, verse 12. He that hath the son hath life, and he that hath not the son hath not life. It's as simple, as clear as that. In John chapter 3 from verse 15 to 17, Jesus is speaking with Nicodemus, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, 15 says, but to have eternal life. Now verse 16, popular scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 17, it says God did not send his son. I wish many people would hear this, that God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through that son might be saved are we together the first demand that you must walk in keeping with is an encounter with jesus the son of the living god number two the second demand the second factor that you must keep to enjoy and maximize eternal life are you ready is knowledge 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 the administration of eternal life like you have learned at the, again and again in this house is knowledge dependent say knowledge. knowledge now back to my example of your applications and the updates so here you are having various updates sometimes it will list as much as 10 15 updates are we together now and it gives you the liberty to, if you know how to use them well, you can update every one of them. But in ignorance, you will not even know you are supposed to update the applications. So even though it has been given, it takes knowledge. Ephesians 4.18 Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. You can be genuinely saved. Genuinely saved. The same way the app was really at your phone. Your phone has that application. But never enjoy the riches that come with that life. You need knowledge. The knowledge of the promises and the benefits that come with this life you have received. And scattered all through scripture. You find it in Psalm 103. You find it in, you know, all through the gospels and even the epistles various expressions of these promises and these benefits that come with the zoe life i've taught you many times the bible says bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name verse 2 says bless the lord oh my soul and forget not his benefits this scripture has a capture of some of them number one who forgiveth all thine iniquities number two who healeth all thy diseases number three who redeemeth thy life from destruction deliverance number four who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies number six who satisfied thy mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle this is a, a capture of some the many other benefits but you must know what has come to you on account of this eternal life. So the first factor is an encounter with the son of the living God. Number two, knowledge. Number three, what is the third requirement to enjoy this life that you have received in Christ? Faith to appropriate the promises that come with that life. Again, faith to appropriate the promises that come with that life what is faith action what is faith obedience faith to appropriate the promises that come with that life knowing that you have been given exceeding great and precious promises is not enough you must have the faith to engage the faith to obediently engage with the promises to appropriate the promises that come with that life 
Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38. Enjoying eternal life as the just happens by faith. Now the just shall live by faith. And if any man draws back, he says, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. I think it's 39. Let's try 39. If he has something I'm looking for. Yes. He says, but we are not of them who draw back in unto perdition. He says, but of them that believe unto the saving of the soul. Your believing is unto something. Salvation. The journey of the believer and your excelling. As far as this faith life is concerned. As far as eternal life is concerned. Is faith dependent. Many times they cried unto Jesus. Increase our faith. And he did not consider their request as unnecessary. The Bible lists for us various levels of faith. You have been taught here. A quick recap. No faith little faith great faith exceeding great faith these are the four levels of faith and all of them do not purchase the same dimension of spiritual reality no faith little faith great faith exceeding great faith hallelujah this is the victory that overcome the world the bible says even our faith so you need an encounter with jesus the son of the living god Second, you need knowledge. High level spiritual illumination as touching the promises and the benefits that come with this life. Number three, the faith to engage, the faith to appropriate the promises that come with this life you have received. Finally, are you ready? The final factor you must walk in keeping with is that you must understand the warfare dimension of experiencing eternal life. The warfare. I am confident that the sermons you've immersed yourself in have served as a wellspring of blessings, uplifting your life and instilling a profound commitment to wholeheartedly serve God. We extend a warm invitation for you to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel. By activating the notification bell, you ensure that you remain connected and never miss any of our upcoming videos. Your subscription signifies more than a mere click. It represents a pledge to continual spiritual growth, enlightenment, and empowerment. Embark on this faith-filled journey with us as our channel aspires to be a haven for both spiritual seekers and devoted believers. We ardently believe in the transformative power of God's Word, and our objective is to share messages that deeply resonate with your soul. Join our community, subscribe, and allow the radiant light of divine wisdom to illuminate your path. We express our gratitude for your integral role in this uplifting journey, and we pray that God's abundant blessings overflow in your life. Amen. Stay connected with us on all our social media platforms at Flaming Channel, and feel free to explore our website at www.flamingchannel.com. Thank you, and may God abundantly bless you.